If you're in your first microeconomics class and kind of screwed for your first midterm, this is the most important thing to know about each of the units you're gonna be tested on. And I've done my best to get a stab at what your professor's gonna have on their first midterm. If there's any discrepancies here though, go check out my microeconomics cram kit where you can learn all 95 core concepts in microeconomics for free. Consumer choice is all about marginal benefits and costs. As consumers, we only take another unit if we are adding more benefit or utility than it's costing us. If a slice of pizza costs five bucks, but you'd only benefit four bucks from eating it, then you're not gonna eat that next slice. But if you'd benefit 12 bucks from eating another slice of pizza, then yeah, you're gonna take that next one. All right, that's like basically what you gotta know about consumer choice. Next up here is comparative advantage. What you gotta do is calculate the opportunity cost for both parties for one of the goods. Whoever's got the lower opportunity cost is the one who should specialize in it because it costs them less to produce it. And then by default, the other good will go to the other party. One party cannot have the comparative advantage in both goods, it's impossible. Supply, demand, equilibrium. Equilibrium occurs at that intersection point between the supply and demand curves. If you're working with curves on a graph, it's easy to just see that point. If you're working with equations, set them equal to one another. And if you're working with a table, find the price where quantity supplied and quantity demanded equal one another. An easy mistake though that I see students make is not understanding the difference between what changes quantity demanded or supplied versus shifts in and supplier demand the entire curves. Price is the only thing that can shift quantity supplier demanded. Whereas with the supply and demand curves, there's like four to six shifters for each that you gotta memorize and pinpoint on your exam. Next up here is elasticity. Students very commonly make the mistake of thinking that elasticity is slope, but it's not. Rather, it's the percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. If quantity is changing by a larger percent than price, that means it's more reactive to changes in price and therefore is elastic. On the flip side, if quantity changes by a lower percent than price, then it's inelastic, or we're not as reactive to the price changing. Lastly here, you might get tested on perfect competition. I've seen a couple syllabi that do. Perfectly competitive markets have infinite or many sellers. They're all selling the same exact thing. They're price takers. I'll explain that in a second here. And there's free entry or exit into the market. What that translates to is that perfectly competitive firms do not net any economic profit over the long haul. Because if the market's making profit, then firms are just gonna enter in and start eating up that profit in the short term. And because of this free entry and exit and this, they're all selling the identical same product, they're price takers, meaning that they have to charge the same price as everybody else in the market. If you like the way I explain microeconomics, seriously, go check out that microeconomics cram kit that I mentioned before. It's got 95 free concept breakdowns that just step-by-step -step walk you through basically everything 